Hi, I'm Stephen Han from Archery Supplies and today we're here to look at the PSE Shoot Down Bow. This is the new target bow for 2018 from PSE. Um, basically it's going to replace their PSE Supra. So I want to have a look at it, um, talk about it, compare the difference between this and the other bows and then compare some other target bows so you can think about it. Now overall length of this bow, 38 inches. So it kind of sits in between the PSE Perform and the PSE Perform 3D. The PSE Perform is 40 inches, the 3D is 37. So 38 is a pretty good size. And it's the same size as the PSE Supra, which it will next year replace. Now the PSE, the PSE shoot down is significantly faster than last year's PSE Supra or this year's PSE Supra. The speed on this bow is 334 feet per second, making it basically the fastest of the target bows out there. And through the chronograph, when we chronograph bows, this bow comes up the fastest. And it's even faster than many hunting bows. It en enables you to change the draw length just around here through changing the modules and changing the let off just there. So really, really simple. Now the Evolve cam system is a yoke system here, so it pulls evenly on the limbs. Um, so basically you get no cam lean. It has a machined limb pocket here. So it has a wedge lock system. Now I want to explain this a bit. The wedge lock system, what that does, it pushes the front of these limbs into the limb pocket. Then on this edge of the limb here, you've got these pockets pushing into these limbs. So basically holding these limbs in place so, so they can't move. You've got a lateral limb adjustment system here. And what that does, it moves this position here left and right. Now what that does is change the limbs left to right like that. Now I hate that system. It's not a system I enjoy. I, if I had a choice, PSC would get rid of it. I don't like it at all. I had a guy tune his bow completely. It was perfect. And then he played around with this and he goes, after four hours of tuning my bow, my bow now looks like a banana. I'm like, yeah, why are you changing your lateral limb system? Now, one of the problems I find with the lateral limb system um, is there's no marks here. So you don't know when you move the lateral limb system left or right, you don't know where you're actually moving it to as far as center. So you've got to eyeball it. Now, with that customer where he basically changed his lateral limb system as far left as he could and as far right on the bottom, I just moved everything back to the center and everything tuned perfectly. So if you can't tune the bow, Generally, if you can't tune it, look at the RS and look at the arrows first. Everything should be straight down the center, 90 degrees, there should be no issues. Now the, su the Supra, the shoot down comes in a whole heap of colors. This is a satin mercury. It's a shiny silver and I really like the color. It comes in gold, which is, that's the gold, which is the same as the Perform. It's a really nice gold. Um, being very very popular Now the green on the shoot down has changed the color of the green right now. It's a dark green This is quite a dark green earlier in the year. It was a light green now the Supra has Sorry the Supra the shoot down has been extremely slow this year in production So this is basically the first shipment I've seen of soup of shoot downs I have had one shoot down in my store previously before this shipment um, like I said, the first, the first of the greens were much, much lighter. In fact, they were like this color. They were more like a lime green. Now they're a dark green. They come in a titanium, which is this dark color. This is really popular. Um, I'm going to try and get all the rest of the colors. Purple, white, black. Um, black cherry now the black cherry has changed the first black cherry was on a review i did on the perform which is the perform 3d which i shot and it was a, like a little bit of a darker red the new dark cherry is a significantly darker red and almost tinging towards purple um, it comes in rose gold which i haven't seen yet oh and there's probably a couple of others there which i've missed anyway it comes in a whole heap of colors some of the colors are going to be slow. Left-handed's been slow. So basically, I haven't seen a left-handed bow yet. Um, I believe they're starting to ship some now. Now, the cable guard. The cable guard has changed for 2018 over 2017. This is a flexible cable guard where you can change the position here 
roller cable slides. Now, PSE do not serve over there where it tracks them down the rollers. And I originally said it wasn't a good idea not to serve that. Hoyt and other companies where it goes through the cable guard do serve. And if you want to avoid wear on that spot, serve it. Now on my bow, I shoot a lot, like a lot of arrows. I haven't surfed it and I'm really not seeing any wear there. Um, I did have a guy who shot for six months and he shoots several hundred arrows a day and he wasn't getting wear there, but it's definitely a wear spot. So if you want to stop the wear, then you serve that location, but the wear is not significant and that's why PSE don't serve that location. Now the string stop down here has changed for 2018. The art last, the last models were metal. Um, were metal. The new versions are carbon. So if I go to the Supra, you'll see the string stop was metal. Now with the metal version, they did have some issues with them breaking off. Obviously, that won't occur with the carbon system there. It does have a lower mount. Um, weight system weight systems for low low amounts um rear stabilizer down here um dum, dum, dum. multiple sight sight holes here so you can move the sight up and down the strings are made by pse these are live wire strings in the past pse have used america's best strings they're making their own strings now pse called them live wire they're made by a computer and they put a whole heap of twists in their string. You can see how much twist. Now the theory of this is it makes the string more stable and less peep rotation. It's up to you. The yoke system here, if I zoom in, it's metal. If you derail your bow, this is going to hit your cam and damage your cam. So don't derail your bow. Now with the target, with target bows, derailing is very rare. And with the low let off on these bows, either 65 or 75, I have not had a derail on any of them. So the derails are more prone on 70 pound bows with high let offs because you're basically holding very little poundage back here and you do that and you derail the bow. Doesn't occur so much on the target bows. Um, so a bit about this bow versus the others. So let's compare it to the Perform. The Perform 3D is a shoot through riser. This riser consumes a lot more metal, takes a lot longer to make and hence the cost. The cost of this bow is about 2100 versus 1600 So you go $500. What is $500 to you? Now the theory of the shoot, shoot through riser is it's more rigid and it's more balanced. Now most of your top target shooters will shoot a shoot through, will shoot a shoot through riser. Now I will say at Vegas, I'm going to get the numbers wrong, there was definitely at least two PSE bows in the shoot off at Vegas. There was four Matthews, four Elite, maybe there was four PSE as well, two Hoyt, one Martin who ended up winning. One of the guys was shooting a shoot down and one was definitely shooting the um, perform. Um, in Lancaster, the finalist was Dan, Dan Jenser, I think, sorry, one of the finalists. He was shooting the shoot down in preference to the perform. So basically, is this bow any worse than the shoot down to shoot? And I'm going to say, no, it's not. So you've just got to go, well, which one do I prefer the look of? And do I think it's going to be an advantage? Now, the bow I currently shoot is the Perform, which is a shoot through riser and 40 inches. So the first question is going to be, well, 40 inches versus 38. Am I going to notice a difference between 40 inch, 38 and 37? inches in bow. Now I shot really good scores with the Perform 3D and I'm not shooting so well with the 40 inch. Now I think that's due to the poundage of the bow. The, the 37 inch shoot down Perform I was shooting was 50 pound and I was finding that really easy. The Perform at 60 pounds I was struggling drawing back and my arrow was falling off the rest just through me struggling to pull it. So in fact, I've wound the Perform back in poundage to 56 pound and it's still hurting my shoulder. So my shoulder through drawing. So with the, with the expression, which I shot last year, which is this cam system here, the hybrid cam system, the bow is not as fast. Okay. So we're probably talking speeds on this, on this bow, it says 325, but this bow is significantly faster. The 10 feet per second, I don't think is even close. This bow is significantly faster but it puts more pressure on your shoulders. And I find I shake more because I'm not strong enough yet 
for the 56 pounds on the perform so I shoot some very good arrows and I shoot some poor arrows just through me shaking and when I do all my bow tests I'm now thinking that the lighter the bow is to shoot the better I shoot and it's due to do with how much I'm actually shaking at the target which is all to do with me how much I shake so to do with bow length brace height and all that I think it's mainly me and how much I'm shooting versus my accuracy so if everything was the same and I was strong and I was used to this poundage I think I would shoot better with the perform but honestly I cannot tell the difference between 40 inches 37 inches and the 38 inch bow um, I do notice the difference in speed between the expression and the perform so you will notice the difference on the shoot down versus the Supra. The Supra is $200 cheaper. The Supra is a shoot through system, uh, sorry, a hybrid cam system. So it has a yoke um, on one end, but you will notice the difference in speed between that and this. Now speed, people are gonna say, well, are you better with the faster bow? Now I think you are better with the faster bow because you can shoot heavier arrows out of it, which means less wind drift less time in the air i think you're going to shoot better with the shoot downs and performs than the expression type cams now just on that point the ones i've sold so far in australia people have shot better scores with than their previous bow and i am the exception to the rule however i did shoot really good scores with the 50 pound 3d i shot but with the perform I'm not shooting so well I mean I've shot okay scores but nothing like I was shooting before and that's just me building my muscles back up so I think I've answered those sort of questions about length and all that so how does the shoot shoot down sit in the marketplace as far as bang for buck I think for $200 if you're spending $1600 on a bow and this is Australian dollars I'm going to say it's probably better value than the Super at 1400 and for me 1600 versus the 2100 on their perform you really have to think about. I think my opinion is the shoot down is better value than the perform but I think more people will probably buy the perform because once you spend 1600 you think well I'll just throw the extra 500 and I'll be done with it. So I think I'll sell more performs and I will shoot downs but in 2017 the Supra outsold the expression 10 to 1 and that was based on price because it was $1,400 versus $2,100 but because this bow has gone up in price and um, some of it's true this um, machining out here and down here requires more work the Volve cam system is a little bit more expensive but I think they'll sell in similar numbers. But last year, the Super outsold the expression, yeah, 10 to one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna shoot this bow on the shooting range and hopefully shoot it through the chronograph and see what speeds we get. But it is running outside, so we'll see how that goes. So we're here to shoot the shoot down at 18 meters. Now I've fitted a basic five pin sight to the bow and a basic whisker biscuit arrow rest and a D loop. There's no peep sight, there's no stabilizers. There's yeah, none of that stuff. It's just a basic setup, which is what I do for all my tests. Now the balance on the bow is perfect. Now the bow itself weighs 4.7 pounds, which is a fairly heavy bow, but that's fairly standard these days with target archery. So if you're not that strong, this bow may be too heavy for you. This bow is really aimed for someone who shoots a lot of arrows. So this is for someone who's serious, this bow is used by people shooting you know, world championships. This is, this is a serious bow. Um, so let's have a few shots. Uh, first off, now the Evolve cam system. Um, this is the same Evolve cam system that is used on the Perform and the Perform 3D. The modules are the same modules used on all the Evolve cam systems. The modules used for this, there's a little letter on them. RLL low let off I'm pretty sure I can't see because the light here is so poor um, but what one thing I like about PSE is the modules you can change the draw length which is all cool you can change the let off which is all cool just through rotating the module so you don't need to go to the dealer to, to change the draw length which is very good but what's really good for the dealer with Matthews every bow's got a different module so whether you shoot a Chillax 
or a ballistic, which is almost the same cam. It's a different module. So as a result, with Matthews, I have like ten thousand dollars worth of modules. Every bow is a different module. With this, with PSE, every Evolve cam system uses the same modules. Now, this is the same module that is used in the um, Expedite to get the huge speeds, and that's why this bow gets the huge speeds. It's a slightly different cam to the Expedite. Um, it's a bit smaller, the Evolve cam system, but we'll explain the draw cycle. So when I start off here, it's solid from the from the word from the instant you draw this thing back, this thing is solid. So here, here now, the it almost feels like the same poundage right the way through, but it is getting heavier. So here it's heavy, heavy. It's kind of peaking. I feel like it's about drop off. It's dropping off here now, dropping, dropping, dropping dead stop so what you've got here is a lot of weight drawing 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 and then it's a very slow let off to no let off if that makes sense so it's the valley hit and then there's no thing so basically what you're getting this is about between a 65 to a 75 percent let off you're not getting a big valley it's a very short valley but the drop off is not it's not an instant drop off like some of the bows you draw back and it's like bang it hits it so if you go to let the bow down I'll let the bow down so I draw back here I don't really feel I feel there's a valley there and I'm in a valley and I don't even know I'm in a valley if that makes sense so if I go to let the bow down you can see I can control it the whole way with the bows which have that instant drop off when you go to let the thing down it feels like it's ripping your shoulder out now this bow is at 60 pounds set at 29 from the factory um, well that's where it's meant to be my shoulder is sore from shooting um, it feels purely comfortable the whole way the draw cycle does not feel like the expedite with the low let off modules it feels a lot smoother so even though this is a speed bow in all senses of the word this is one of the fastest bows I've shot it it doesn't feel that it feels nice and smooth the entire way you can't pick the peak you really don't know you're hitting the valley until the bow physically stops it just it's a really nice draw cycle um, now you've got the twin yokes as you pull it back the yokes basically are un unrolling so you get the so you get the balance in the cam each limb is a different poundage so basically that should stop the cam ling it's it's a pretty nice bow to draw back so let's let's have a shot now and let's see where these things go now I'm going to say one thing PSE have changed in the later modules see the size of that axle that is one huge axle now PSE I'm going to say every bow company uses the same size axle which is a standard size axle PSE in I think it's the December 27th of 2017 changed to a thicker axle now why they did that, um, you'll see here on on some of the PSEs it'll look like the limbs were at like at an angle like there and there, they look like they're angling down and that always been the case with all the PSE, it didn't affect the way the bow's shot, it just looked like they're angling. As soon as they put these massive um, axles in that went away, um, I'm hoping you can kind of see that because it'll still look like it's like People used to say to me, oh, my axle's bent. No, like pull the axle out, you'll see it's dead straight. Um, but with the fatter axles, it now kind of looks straight. I'm not sure what it was before, but they definitely weren't bent. But I did get comments that they were bent from people. When I say comments, people say, oh, my cams are bent. I say, pull the axle out, they're not bent, they'll be fine. Bows always shot good. Um, so there was never an issue about that. So let's shoot an arrow. So the grip, the grip on the shoot down, very similar to the Perform. The weight of this bow, 4.7, is the same weight as the 3D Perform, which I really like shooting. The Perform, the 40 inch Perform, is slightly heavier at about five pounds. Now I would say I shot better with the 3D Perform than the Perform. And I think I am struggling with the extra poundage because I'm shaking around a bit. So my scores have dropped a little. I have shot one decent sort of score, but still not what I was shooting before with the expression. 
with the perform with the perform 3D I shot great. So let's could be because I tuned the perform. I never tuned the 3D. I just shot the 3D. Um, so let's just try this. So it feels good. Get back. It's solid when you get back here. So let's just aim it up and shoot. I think the bow stayed there in my hand. I didn't, honestly, I didn't notice it at all. Um, that one's been rum hooded. Um, I didn't notice it at all. It felt like I was shooting with my full stabilizer set up on the bow, but obviously it felt lighter, felt comfortable. This thing, it feels and it sounds fast. And that's not to say it's not out, you know, it's not out of control, because it's not. It just feels like a fast bow. And when I shoot with people, people are like, God, that bow's fast. And it is. It's, this is one of the fastest bows I've shot through a speed machine. Now, I get questions um, about how are you going to shoot with this and, you know, accuracy and all this. This bow versus a Supra and all that sort of stuff. It gets back to how much you shoot. Um, this bow is faster than the Supra. Um, how are you going to shoot with this compared to the Perform 3D versus the Perform 38 inches versus 37 versus 40? I think it gets purely back to the Archer. Um, I chose the 40 inch because I was like, well, I want a bow that's going to be accurate. Not to say the 37 is not, I just was like, well, longer should be more accurate. So. But at the end of the day, you've got to point the thing in the middle of the target and you've got to shoot it in the middle of the target. That's it. I'm hoping that wasn't a terrible shot. Um, so like this bow feels lovely to shoot. Now on that, on those points that people ask about bow length and brace height and speed, if you're just a recreational shot shooter, you shoot once a week, a lighter bow, a bow which is physically less mass, you may shoot better with because you don't have the strength to hold up a heavier bow. The heavier bow will have less vibration in the shot. I have not noticed any vibration with any of these shots. I feel like I'm shooting with stabilizers because the bow doesn't move and I'll pay attention to it this shot. Yeah, like that bows, my hand grips like relaxed. I'm hoping you can see it, my hand grip, grips kind of relaxed. It feels really good. I don't know where the arrows are going. But it feels really good to shoot. Now, on that, sorry, I was thinking. <laughs> One thing about accuracy, if the bow's too heavy, you're gonna shake, and I'm shaking around a bit with 60 pounds. So, yeah, sometimes better to go to a lighter poundage bow to shoot um, than a heavier poundage. Sorry, when, I, when I'm shooting, I'm kind of focused. I'm really focused on trying to hit the center. But the bow itself feels great to shoot. Do I notice any difference between this and the Perform? None at all. I don't notice any difference about the way the bow shoots. The draw, now I have had people come in and try the different bows. This is the first time I've shot the shoot down. This is my first arrows with it. I had a purple in my shot before, which I'm pretty sure I didn't get a chance to shoot. It went out to a guy up at Port Peary um, before I got to shoot it. Now he came in and tried all the bows and he preferred the shoot down. 
I've had some people come in my shop and they try out all the bows and they go, I prefer the draw cycle on this one versus that one. Now the, as I said, the Perform, the Shoot Down and the 3D all have the same cam system so they all should feel exactly the same to draw. So if it feels different, it's probably just in your mind. This bow to me feels the same as the 3D to shoot because the weight's, weight's the same. It feels better than the Perform to shoot um, because I think it's a little bit less weight, but feels great. Like. I really like the bow to shoot. Um, so just on this, the improvements from the Supra or the expression from last year, I, I like the carbon cable stop because basically it won't snap off. The finish is good, thick cat axles good, extra speed I like. Um, Different cable guard, different cable guard I like versus last year. I think it's a better bow on it. And we had a question this morning in the shop. It, does the shoot down look better than the Supra, the Batman bow? And one of my staff was saying the Batman bow looks better than this. That's just all personal preference. I like the way this bow looks. I like the Supra, the way that bow looked. I like that bow. I like the way it draws. I like the way it feels. Now, I think you're going to find most of your staff shooters are going to shoot performs because they're given the bows. And if you've got the choice between a $2,100 bow and a $1,600 bow, everyone's going to pick the $2,100 bow. But I don't think that's fair. I don't think it's fair on PSE. And I think, honestly, if you tried both bows, you'd probably go $500. I can't see it. Um, and I can't see the difference between this and the Perform. In many cases, I would prefer this bow than the Perform because loading your arrow is easier than shooting a shoot-through riser. Um, price point on this bow. Now, you've got to compare top of the range target bows. Um, now, the top of the range target bows out there, obviously, Matthews, the TRX. TRX. Um, in Australian dollars, I think it's about $2,000. This is $1,600. The Hoyt um, Prevail, $2,100. The, there's a new one from Obsession, which we haven't done a review on yet, um, which is, I'm not even gonna try the name, maybe the final cut. I think it's about the same price as this, $1,600. So as far as top of the line target bows go, they're all gonna cost about the same, $1,600 Australian dollars. Now, some people say it's too much to pay for a bow. But I'm going to say, if you had to build this bow, i.e. you went down to a local machining shop and said, look, I need you to machine me a hundred of these risers. I need you to make these limbs. I need you to make these pockets. I need you to anodize these bows. I need you to put bearings in the wheels. I need you to anodize these. The cost of this product would be astronomical. Like, so I think the price of archery gear in real terms today, as far as how much you earn, for how much these bows cost, I think is really reasonable. Um, like this bow is 1600. The average person in Australia probably earns 1500. So it's a week's wages to buy this bow. Um, back when I started shooting, the average bow cost 800, 800 odd dollars. And that wasn't the top of the range. The top of the range bow was probably a thousand dollars. And back then the average wage was $500 a week. So it was more like two weeks you had to work for to buy a bow. Now it's about one week you have to work to buy a bow. And I'm talking top of the range. But as far as accuracy is concerned, if you're on a tight budget and money is an issue, you do not need this bow to shoot good scores with. Absolutely not. This is just for people who are serious and go, look, money's no object. Give me the best there is. That's what this is about. So let's go and see how those arrows landed. Okay, so I'm up here at the target. Um, this is a group, and it's pretty bloody average. Like, this is terrible. 
that's all I can say. Terrible. Um, so you can even say I shot really bad. Um, I shot that little hunting bow in my last review yesterday and I just nailed it. Um, I nailed it. Uh, they were just tight as. This, even if I pull the loose arrows, there's left and right variation, there's up and down variation. It's terrible. I shot really bad. Now, does that worry me? Not really, no. Um, it doesn't, well, it kind of does, but it doesn't. And I think when I shot the Prevail in the test, I think my grouping was pretty average with that too. And I and someone said, are you disappointed? Yeah, I was. I thought I should nail those. And in fact, in the practice I did before this to get my sight, sight scenes, I Robin Hood didn't narrow. Like, it is what it is. Like, I don't... I don't shoot the thing three times. I don't lie as far as, you know, I pulled the bow out of the box and I shot 29 X's and then I go and shoot a competition and shoot 14 X's, um, as some people do in their videos. This is what it is. Does it worry me? No, the bow, draw, draws, the, the bow draws back very smooth. The bow has no vibration when it's shot. It's extremely fast. Um, I think, because I was thinking about this last night, because I shot the Obsession Turmoil, um, which I shot extremely well with, and I shot my target bow with all the stabilizers and the scopes, and honestly, I shot better with the hunting bow in the trial than I did with my target bow. Now, does that worry me? I thought about this, and I thought, well, actually, I've seen this in a few of my reviews, I do. And what I've come to realize is I shake around a bit. So I shake around when I'm aiming. Um, and my shoulder physically hurts from shooting the perform because I'm holding and building more poundage. So I'm holding 60 pounds for longer, so it's putting more pressure on my shoulder, the back, and I'm actually shaking. Um, now my theory is, take from what you want, is I shot really well with the 50 pound bow. Really well. Straight off the bat, bang, great score, straight off. Didn't tune it, didn't do anything. I think the bow's faster, so it's holding weight longer. And with 50 pounds, my body was capable of holding it, so I wasn't shaking around so much. When I went up to 60 pounds with the Perform, when I pulled it back, the arrow was coming off the arrow rest because I was shaking so much during the draw cycle. That never occurred to me with the PSE expression at 60 pounds. Never, not once, did my arrow come off. With the perform, it was bouncing and it was falling off the arrest all the time. So what I did is I wound down the poundage of the bow so I can physically draw the bow. So I've wound it down to about 56 pounds and I'm still shaking. And it hurts my shoulders to shoot. It hurts my shoulders so much to shoot that I couldn't shoot recurve that night. So with the extra speed, it's not like you're going, well, I'm going from a 290 feet per second bow to a three. 320 feet per second and by it's not costing you anything no it is it's costing your shoulder you're holding more poundage for longer in the draw cycle than with the slower bow so it actually hurts your body more as a result your body has to become stronger this is my theory your body's got to become stronger to be able to hold that poundage so i could drop my poundage back to 50 and i'll shoot perfectly fine with it same thing with the recurve. When I shoot recurve, if I practice a lot, I actually aim steadier. Um, so I see a huge difference with myself with the recurve if I shoot two hours a day versus 10, hour, 10 arrows a day. Because I shake around so much more because I don't have the strength. I just wobble. I think with the turmoil on the 75, 80% let off, definitely an easier draw cycle, much slower at 290 feet per second than this bow will be. I think because it's so much easier, I'm putting less strain, I'm not shaking as much. So what I think I'm seeing here is my shake. And I think when I do these reviews, what I'm seeing is sometimes shake. So some of my best groupings I've done was with the toe point target bow. Um, which was the actual slowest speed I've chronographed a bow through. I think it shot 270 feet per second. Now that was my best group ever with that bow. So is this a fair assumption? Like what it's doing is giving you a, it's just showing you how I group. 
um, with this setup. It's not saying that bow with target sights and stabilizers won't shoot great because it will. Um, with this bow, I'd wind it down more, and I'm thinking about winding the perform down more. I haven't because I want to build up to 60 pound um, for competition shooting. And people say, why do you need 60 when you can shoot less? My competition's shooting 60, my competition's shooting every day. I've got to shoot every day. I've got to build up to many hours of shooting and I've got to build up my strength again. So that's, for me, it's, you know, three, three, months, down the sh three months down the track I need to peak. So, so this group, not impressive, but I think it's me shaking. And to me, that was pretty much... I shot better than that last night, right? I shot better than that um, with the perform last night. I didn't shoot any. I didn't shoot any reds, but definitely shot better with the turmoil. So anyway, take from that what you will. We are going to be shooting the new Obsession target bows in some later reviews. We're going to shoot shoot this through the chronograph now. This should shoot about the same speed as the perform, which shot 320 feet per second, which is extremely fast with um, the arrow. So let's go and shoot this through chronograph and let's see what speeds we get. Okay, so we're out here to chronograph the shoot down. It should be set on 60 pounds because it's fully wound up. And this is a 60 pound bow. And it should be 29 inches because that's factory setting. We're shooting gold tip velocities. These are 330 grain arrows. Uh, I've got 90 grain points on one end. Um, so let's see what sort of speed we get. And I thought I got 320 out of my bow, so it's really interesting why this is so much. And this bow feels so much lighter to draw back. I'm sorry, I'm looking for my dog, which just disappeared. So this is significantly lighter, sorry, slower than the perform I'm shooting, which shot 320. So I'm going to have to check the draw length on this bow and see why I'm not getting the speed that I thought. Now I'm going to try and find where my dog disappeared to. Anyway, I'll do a summer inside because it's pretty windy out here. Okay, so I've just come inside, found my dog, um, who's playing with things that are flying around, and I weighed the bow. It weighed at 60.03 pounds, so 60 pounds spot on. So that wasn't the issue. So then I measured the draw length. This was straight out of the box at the PSE factory. The draw length was 28 inches. So 28 inches, it was meant to be factory set at 29. It did feel short. It's meant to be factory set at 29 inches as per the tag, which says 29 inches. Um, now it is possible from today to yesterday when I pulled out of the bag, it did get changed to 29 inches, but I'm pretty sure it didn't because I'm pretty sure no one shot this. They couldn't have because there was no D-loop. I, I fitted the D-loop just before doing this video. So basically that was 28 inches. So 29 inches, I think it gives you an extra, I don't know, 10, 10, 15 feet per second, which then puts it up at the 320 odd feet per second. So overall, my summary of the PSE shoot down, I love service from PSE. I think they offer the best service of any company as far as, you know, backup service. If you've got a problem, the parts are easy to get because the modules are all pretty much the same. The limbs are the same for pretty much all the bows. So it's a very, very good company to deal with, PSE. Um, they come in a whole heap of colors, which is great. They look great. The limb pockets, all machined, compressed. The wedge, the wedge lock system there compresses the limbs against the pocket. Very, very good. The draw cycle is very good. And I'm gonna say that when they had the expression last year, that bow was not as good as this bow. And I think last year when PSC had the expression, the Supra, the rivals for it was the Hoyt Prevail um, and the Matthews TRX. And I'm going to say the Prevail and the TRX were significantly faster than the PSE. And I'm going to say they were harder to shoot. 
which is one reason why I never changed because I was shooting really good scores with the expression and I knew they'd be harder to shoot and I didn't want to take the harder to shoot line. I think what PSC have done in 2018, they've produced a bow which is faster than the Matthews and the Hoyt, which I'm going to say the draw cycle is better on the PSC than the Matthews and the Hoyt. I'm going to say the Matthews has less shock than the PSC and the Hoyt. I'm going to say PSE has got less recoil than the, or it's definitely got less recoil and shock than the Hoyt. So I'm going to say overall, I think the PSE is producing a, producing a premium product in the target lineup, but it's not an easy bow to shoot due to the speed, the weight of the bow. So, and the Hoyt and the Matthews are also heavy bows. So it's not like you can go, well, I'll shoot a Hoyt because it's lighter. That's not the case. If you want a lighter bow, you're going to have to go to something like a Win and Win, or the and not the Win and Win Atom X because that's also 4.7 pounds. You're going to have to go to something like the Dragonfly, the PSE Phenom, um, or a Carbon Riser bow, something like the Win and Win Shadow Pro if you want lighter. Um, the draw cycle is holding more weight for longer, so it's putting more tension on your body. And I'm going to, I'm going to say basically a bad shot's probably going to be, going to be made worse with a faster bow, whether it be a Prevail or a TRX or the PSE Perform or the Shoot Down, because it's faster and just basically more exaggerated. Now I'm going to say on the bows I've sold, I've sold a whole bunch of Performs um, to a whole bunch of archers, and I'm going to say every archer. Every archer I've sold, so the ones I've sold, one guy's best score was a 650, he shot a 670 with the perform, took him three weeks to do it. Um, this guy, in, a young kid in WA, shot a, an amazing score with the perform he got in the first week. Um, the local, there's a local kid here shooting a perform who would now be out shooting me, shooting great scores the very first day he got the bow. Now, I was shooting great scores at 50 pounds. Um, I'm not shooting such great scores now towards the 60 pounds. I'm shaking around. But I'm not blaming the bow. Um, I'm saying I've got to shoot more, and that's what I'm intending to do. So I like the bow. I like the shock. I like the vibration. The fact that there is none. I like the draw cycle. I like the speed. I like the looks, and I like the service. So even though my groups on the 18 meter shooting range was not good, um, I think it's more to do with poundage and the draw cycle because I found that on most of the fast bows, my groupings are generally not as good. Um, I'm going to be interested in the future reviews I do because I'm doing some faster bows in the next reviews that I've got planned to see what my groups are on those to see if they're actually going to be tight or not as good because um, they are going to be faster bows in this sort of speed in this speed predicament so anyway I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies that's the PSE shoot down get down to your local archery shop and check them out and check out the other bows you know don't take my word for it from it that one bow is better than the other go and check them out and make your own assessment based on the way the bow feels based on price based on level of customer service and if it's your local shop, ask them what the level of customer service is they get with that brand. Because it may be very different from shop to shop. Um, so for me, I had to wait you know, for one company four months to get parts in where a customer managed to get them in two weeks. And I, I've been having a huge spit with that company why a customer can get parts in two weeks and it takes me four months. Um, so yeah always ask the people about service and what it's like and how long it takes to get stuff at the moment there is a delay on left-handed from pse um and i think pse is looking mid-april at the at this stage for left-handed products to be produced so just bear that in mind but overall i i really like this um as far as compared to the perform i'm gonna say this is the bow i'm gonna get um, compared to a perform for my indoor bow. 
um, because I'm going to set up a bow purely for indoor to see how I shoot with fat arrows compared to my skinny arrows. Um, and I'm going to say the shoot down is the bow I'm going to get. So I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies. The more you shoot, the better you'll shoot. Thanks for watching. Bye.